Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we're going to read a fabulous lecture from Quo. This one is dedicated to gifts, delivered on October 22nd, 1989. And they ask about how to realize your gifts and be aware of them and how to develop them in being of service to others. Quo is an advanced, evolved civilization of beings channeling through LL research that answers spiritual questions, particularly in relation to the transition that we have going on this planet. We begin with the question, how can people who are interested in pursuing in a life's work and being of service to others and developing their gifts discover what exactly the gifts are that they have? And then if say, they have more than one gift, how can people determine what the best way of service is, how to use the gifts or gift that they have in developing themselves? Carla Channeling I am Quo. Greetings in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. It is a great privilege to share in this circle of meditation and seeking to see the earnest hearts of those who wish to express their unity of all that there is in the very life that they lead. We are aware that the illusion is a heavy one, that missteps are inevitable and frequent. We urge each always to turn again in hope, to try once more, to be undiscouraged by circumstances, but simply to abide in this feeling that fills this dwelling place at this time, the unconditional love of the one infinite creator. The third density is not a density in which wisdom plays a great part. It is the folly of men to believe that there is wisdom in third density, and thus one may see the ideal of justice, an ethical philosophical ideal which does not take into account either the nature of the illusion, the purpose of the illusion, or those entities which have come to self-consciousness within third density illusion. In any real sense, there is little observable justice for the plan which each has created before the lifetime often deliberately includes difficult, unfair, and painful circumstance, and the more spiritually ambitious an entity is, the more difficult the lessons that that entity came to manifest will be. We speak to this evening to those whose worldly ambitions are a cipher, a nothing, This has been decided. This leaves the mind free, regardless of whether work is done in the mundane world or not, to ponder and contemplate those philosophical and spiritual questions that you may have. This is a great head start that you have over people who are torn between the world and the cosmos, between this life and infinity. Those who have awakened such as you to their true desire to be of service to the one infinite creator by loving each other, are so often in the difficult position of having to adjudge their own service in the absence of any support whatsoever. This is especially true of the mated relationship and the raising of children. There is no greater or more sacrificial service than the raising of young souls attempting to offer to those souls that information which is grist not only for making one's way in the mundane world but for becoming aware of eternity, becoming aware that so-called human beings have a context into which they fit. They are not the be-all and end-all of evolution. Evolution moves steadily on, and the progress after third density is all spiritual. Within this density, you still need more of the personality in order to deal with the heavy chemical vibrations. More and more you will see yourselves as a spiritual discovery, finding and refining that truth which is within you until you become aware of your nature. Becoming aware of one's own nature may or may not sound simple. It is not simple in our estimation unless one has the gift of faith, as this instrument does, and simply bypasses the intellect, moving instinctively toward intuition and what the instrument calls purified emotion, for the most part. Entities wish to do something which is of true service to the Creator. And it seems logical and right to entities 
who have observed great spiritual figures of the past and present to wish to be great spiritual figures and to be of service in that way also. One can even seek dramatic publicized service to others, and within the limitations of mixed contact, since there is ego involved in such hope, such channels are able to do much good to bring many souls to an awareness of the mystery that underlies all there is. We always say to each that we do not wish to become a stumbling block, and we wish to take only that which makes sense to you from what we say. And no matter how inspiring, if confusing, we ask that you release and forget the information, for it is not your personal truth at this time, and there is no need for you to change and struggle and strive. The spiritual path is one of allowing things to occur, for you have planned well. Each of you would be unable to incarnate at this time upon this particular sphere were it not possible for each and every entity to graduate either service to self or service to others. Third density, that is, each has the opportunity of learning to use a denser and much enhanced cohesion of light. In this atmosphere, as the instrument has often said, thoughts become things. And as you are entering into this time into fourth density space-time, thoughts are becoming things over and over again. The negative emotions involved with lifestyles that are not helpful to the entity, through anger, through feelings of rejection and so forth, cause much illness, much unhappiness. It is difficult for the person who comes to this information as a neophyte to imagine that he or she could be of equal service to those who heal or teach or channel. For the latter three are somewhat dramatic. The entity, if positively oriented, is relatively without ego, as you call the need to impress or to control. We would like to extend this idea to form a true picture of spiritual service in third density. Perhaps the greatest spiritual service you can do is to center and meditate and think upon the Creator lovingly, gratefully, emotionally in a purified and inner way, not letting your prayers float to the four corners of the room in which you are so that entities may hear you, but rather stepping into that inner room and listening in silence, waiting for the presence of the Infinite One. The difficulty for those within your culture is that people identify service to others with certain specific skills, which we would call dramatic skills, such as the vocal channeling and the healing. It is our opinion that each and every entity who has incarnated at this time upon the earth has a beautiful, loving, and right service to perform, planned beforehand, planned in such a way that one may be continuously rocked and buffeted by the winds of change that accompany realization. This is true, whether or not the service is the greatest service of all, that of knowing who you are and of vibrating in that knowledge consciously or of non-dramatic service. This is what confuses your people. It is your people's idea that some services are greater than other services. This is true only insofar as some desires to serve are purer than other desires to serve. It does not matter what is in front of your face. What is in front of your face is your service. If you can allow yourself to flow intuitively in the river of consciousness, you, yourself, will let yourself know, yes, I wish to do this. No, I do not wish to do that. Therefore, we suggest that in order to find out one's gifts, one do several things. Firstly, if one is of some substantial age and has had many experiences, it becomes extremely easier to gaze back over the incarnation and see the pattern of lessons to be learned. One kind of lesson will occur again and again and again until you have mastered and balanced your ability to serve under those conditions. Basically, each entity goes through a lifetime process of accepting the unacceptable, of forgiving the unforgivable, of loving the unlovable, of consoling the inconsolable, of pardoning one in error, even when that error has cost you greatly. It does not seem to be a service to be a parent or breadwinner or any of the other myriad non-dramatic ways of living possible what sets the spiritual seeker apart from one who simply lives 
in the mundane world without questions as to eternity is that realization of the present moment as eternity. That ideal which says, I can have time spent with the Infinite One. I can feel its love and its light. These experiences are meaningful to me. This creates an atmosphere within of trust, so that one may gradually, gradually relax and allow the rhythm of life, as you have planned it, to overtake you. It is not well to pray and affirm in the attempt to control the life, because that which is upon the surface of your minds is as the tip of the iceberg, and those things which are deepest within take some time to express themselves through dreams, visions, or instant realizations after ten years of work. Some entities move quickly, others more slowly and more surely. All that we suggest to each is that each remain within the integrity of the self, feeling the selfhood of the self, feeling the discrimination and the thought processes of the self, so that as one listens to all of life, whether it be the weather report or a symphony or a channeling such as this one, one is listening with an ear to pray for the lost, to rejoice with the joyful, to give thanks for those who have had blessing, and to console those who are wretched. Any form of loving one another is that action which expresses what this instrument would call the Christ consciousness, that which is deeply buried within you, that which you are to some extent acquainted but perhaps more to the point of being able to love without stint, to give without thinking, to spend all one's energy, time, talent, and what you call money with the spiritual life central and in the mind. It is possible to be of tremendous service while washing your dishes, for as one washes the dishes, it is a waking meditation. The gestures are automatic, and it is possible in the meantime to be in a state of light meditation and listening or in a state of contemplation, or in a state of intercessory prayer, where you are concerned for the health and the well-being of those you love. Thoughts are becoming things. Your prayers are heard more than ever. We find that it is unfortunate that entities who are upon the spiritual path that does not include orthodox religion tend to wish that they may be of this or that service rather than allowing service to come to them. It will come. It has been planned. It may not seem dramatic or large or important, but the dish washed for the love of the one infinite creator is a dish washed in a bath of love as well as soap and water. And that love radiates and lightens the consciousness of the planet. This is your greatest service, each of you. And you do it within the unmanifest being, with no one to know, no drama, and no announcement of having done so. You are working upon your evolution, and from third density forward, all evolution is spiritual. Thusly, we would back up and look at how one may abide in faith and have the patience, the persistence, and the faith to wait and do what there comes before the face to do. That, and that alone, for that instant, is all that is needed. It is never known to you when you have truly succeeded and when you have failed, nor is it important, for if you do anything for the love of the one infinite creator, that radiant thought, however poorly the actions manifest, is a purely positive, loving and caring thought, and will add to the consciousness and the lightness of your sphere. Entities within your culture are much bemused by gadgetry, much in love with foreign places, ambitious and restless and yearning and thinking that what they hunger for is better money, a better position, more power or more clout in some way. This is not the objective of living this particular incarnation in this particular density. You are attempting to drop that of yourself which does not seem to be loving, not in overcoming or repressing it, but by balancing it and understanding it within the self. This is a difficult thing to do, painful for those with any sensitivity for as you know, all of creation lives within you. You are all that is. Circumstances may have made it possible for you to move through the incarnation comfortably, or uncomfortable but honestly, or comfortably and dishonestly, or uncomfortable and dishonestly, yet within each and every situation, no matter how unpromising, 
lies that which may be a certain knowledge, a certain determined hope in that which is unseen. That the situation before one's eyes is exactly what it should be. And painful or wonderful is giving you what you need to take in and work with as catalyst at this time. Each upon this planet at this time had a hand in creating the life pattern. Once one has discovered the lesson that one has set oneself, it becomes easier to see tiny moment after tiny moment, and small detail after small detail take on an aura of the spiritual as one seeks within such situations. To find a way to manifest love where there is no love, light where there is no light, and union where there was discord, we may say because each is aware that each is a wanderer who has come to this planet at this time to be of service to those who are attempting to graduate, who are not able to accept the consolations of any organized religion. We do not claim to be a religion, a church, a dogma, or a doctrine. We are those who have had experiences with the Creator, who have grown closer and closer to the Creator, and who expect to have quite a way to go before we are able to dissolve once again in the ocean of unmanifest love. The cycle is as beautiful as the beating of a giant heart, and the fact that anything that one does could not be one service is to us improbable, subjectively. One may feel that one has erred, made mistakes, been thoughtless, and so forth. It is well in those times to continue positive thinking and move quickly towards a state of forgiveness of the self and of the one with whom there was conflict. Perhaps the second greatest service upon your planet at this time or at any time in third density is the responsibility of parenting young souls who know and seek the truth with childish, lilting voices and squeals of laughter. This particular service is looked down upon by most as being the lot of the one who is too lazy to work. We find the concept ludicrous in that children and a home are a great deal of work. There is no boss, there is no judge. There is only the parent attempting to be of service to the young one. And we may say that it is our opinion that the most helpful thing spiritually in the service of raising children for the children is either to bring them to any organized religious group for interaction with people of their own age and teachers, or, and this is undoubtedly preferable to many, to create a worship service within the home that is done daily and without comment. Emphasis is not put upon such spiritual discipline it is picked up by young children as that stress or emphasis which protests too much. Happy are the parents who are settled in peace together and who may sit in meditation or whatever form of spiritual practice is desired each and every day for a short time. This moves into the child's subconscious as that which is, and in our opinion, this is the truth of that which is, that is, that the Creator is within everything. It is impossible not to serve if one is loving the Creator while doing the service. At this time, your planet is very polarized. Very positive entities gaze upon the havoc created by very negative ones. And negative entities gaze back at those who are polarizing towards the positive and see what this instrument would call suckers. We urge each, therefore, to allow those things to happen which happen, and to ponder them and ruminate on them and even analyze them if one is of an analytical turn of mind at the end of each day, that one may remain clear, confident, and calm, centered in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. We know of no other way to explain to you the difference between your view of service and our view of service than to say that to us there is no lifetime lived that is not potentially a life of service if things within it are done with the love of the one infinite creator and in the love of the one infinite creator. This is not easy medicine for entities to swallow. Wanderers especially are quite certain they have a mission. Indeed, the mission may be a humble one. There are no missions that are not humble. Some seem to be more than humble services because they are dramatic, such as this instrument as she speaks without knowing what word will come next. This is interesting to people, a tightrope act and therefore dramatic. Will the instrument lose the contact? Will the acrobat fall off the slim, round, slippery wire upon which he is walking between the present moment and eternity? 
You are here to bring light to a dark world. It is as simple as that. The purpose for which wanderers incarnated is all one, to love and to love and to love and to love. You'll be hurt, broken, humiliated, and defeated in the course of a life in faith. It runs directly counter to the culture in which you live, to do things for an ideal reason, to focus upon the Creator, which is unseen rather than all of the phenomena, all the gadgetry, all the amusements that are so delightful upon the surface of your life in your density. Be aware that even in those situations you may choose to be of service by moving constantly in an awareness of the love and the light of the one infinite Creator. But also, and most of all, be aware we ask each that non-dramatic service is as vital as dramatic service, just as the mouth of an entity speaks many things but would not be able to function without each and every organ of the physical vehicle, which must be kept in some sort of balance in order that one may manifest any gifts whatsoever. We may say that there is one thing that we would not advise in attempting to be of service and find one's niche, and that is to attempt to control the process. The conscious mind has very little in it compared to the unconscious mind, in which lies the roots of mind and the Creator itself, covered over and over by distortion, but there, perfect and whole nevertheless, each one's true nature. Now we would suggest to this group, as it is doing somewhat advanced work, that it simply practice the presence as it moves about the daily activities, not berating the self every time one realizes one has not thought about the Creator for hours, but simply turning again and again to its simple ideal, the desire for the love of the infinite Creator to love each other. Almost any situation which seems difficult involves a lack or a loss of love. Hearts that are not opened to the love and the light of the infinite creator can be mean and petty, hurtful and vicious, all in the name of service. Better it is that you do nothing but sit in one place and send love than be active and confused and somewhat negative as well as positive by desiring to control what happens to one. For in the desire to help someone, there needs to be the realization that one must come to a halt within and admit that one does not know all that there is to know about service to this entity, that one will need inspiration and intuition so that one may call upon those deep resources of the self, which many call the higher self, the Holy Spirit, guardian angel, or inner planes master. All of these sorts of entities exist. The difference between them is only that of outer plane third density and inner plane third density. Those within the outer plane may come from other planes. Those within the inner plane must have at one time been incarnate upon this particular sphere. Thus be aware we ask you of the service that you provide by your very consciousness, by your love of the sunlight and the dappled shades of autumn trees, by your love of the immensity of the universe and its no mental mystery by seeing itself as sanctified. A blessing which oftentimes seems a most uncomfortable and inconvenient blessing. Now, how shall you reach that point of faith where you refuse to accept that you are not of service and simply continue to be of service? As this instrument has said many times upon its own due to its own experience with its intelligence, the intellect has almost no help to give a spiritual seeker for those truths which will be helpful to one will be recognized from within as personal truths. Thus we urge each one listening to us or any other spiritually oriented being speak to discriminate carefully not in terms of intellectual right and wrong and so forth but in terms of the intuitional feeling of recognition or non-recognition of truth. Each has a different path. This thing that is common to all paths in third density is that you are learning how to be loved and how to love. This is the foundation of a social memory complex which shall be your next lesson. That is to see all that there is in each mind and in each mind is the mind of the murderer, the rapist, the robber, the revolutionary, the despot, and yet accept the self and all others for the nature which has been given them in order 
that they might make choices with free will. It is very important that there be negativity and difficult experiences that one may learn the humility of one who allows, observes, and then acts, rather than reacts. To take the life into one's own hands is not to take control of what one wishes by affirmations and prayers unceasing. It is rather to realize that the plan has already been made, the pattern has been set. It is the best pattern you and your higher self could create for you, and all that you need to do this time is allow yourself to be upon the path upon which you are keeping your eyes open, watching your feelings, finding ways to manifest love, the smile upon the street, the kind word to a stranger. This instrument is asking us to allow this to end, and however, we wish to make one more point before we leave. The instrument itself was concerned with its many gifts and its lack of desire to use the gifts of creativity in an intellectual or physical manner, such as the music, the dancing, the criticism, and the creative writing. In fact, all of these gifts are being used in this life pattern. It is simply that the gifts are being used to support that one thing with which the channel has been concerned and involved within its entire life experience. That being living in a poem, the making of a beautiful tapestry of a life as a gift to the one infinite creator. We would at this time transfer this contact, thanking the one known as Carla and the one known as Jim. We shall close the session through the one known as Jim. I leave this instrument in love and light. I am Quo, Jim Channeling. I am Quo and greet each again in love and light through this instrument. We would offer ourselves at this time in the attempt to speak to further queries. If there are any remaining on the minds of those present, is there a query at this time? Carla. Well, if nobody else has a query, I'll ask one that's really marginal. You probably can't help me, but in talking about spiritual principles with someone who is traumatized by traditional Christianity, one needs a very different vocabulary than one who is a Christian such as myself would use. And I wondered if there is any way to express what to me is a reality. That is that one does not exist metaphysically until one knows who one is and can stand firm on that to the point of death, if necessary, in vocabulary that will be neutral and helpful to one traumatized by religious dogma and doctrine. I am a quo, and am aware of your query, my sister. We find that it is important that one grasp and master these concepts of the knowing of the self to the heart of the being, and the expressing of that knowing as a form of tuning and as a form of challenging of spirits. That it is also necessary that when one speak of these activities, that one do so in a manner which is of one's own nature, shall we say. If it is a stumbling block to speak in this manner, then perhaps the words may be written upon the page after having been brought forth from the heart without censor, and then upon the page be rearranged in a manner that would be acceptable to the one which is not able to receive the words in their original form. There are many ways of describing the what we call basic principles of exercising as an instrument. There are many ways, as there are entities who have accomplished this task. Therefore, we are confident that one which has mastered this task can also re-describe or interpret that experience in a means which is acceptable to another, after having expressed that process as fully and as concisely as possible in the vocabulary and concepts which are natural to the entity, then accomplishing the translation, shall we say. Is there a further query, my sister? No, thank you. I am quo, and we thank you, my sister. Is there another query at this time? I have a question. I've been in a circumstances a number of times where those who are either not serious seekers or those who are seekers within what appears to me to be a very narrow path ask questions about my particular path and I have often been at a loss as to how to answer them without either infringing on their free will or seeming to place judgments on their views of life as being right or wrong. There seems to be such differences in viewpoints and it's difficult for me to know how to answer the questions. Sometimes I feel that they shouldn't be answered at all, but again, I'm at a loss to know how to do that without giving offense. Do you have any comments or suggestions on this situation? I am quote, 
and am aware of your query. We apologize. The instrument was tickled. I am Quo, and am again with this instrument, who has now added the necessary recording device. When you are in the presence of those who ask of your path, and you wish to answer in a manner that is both accurate and compassionate, it is our suggestion that you first ask yourself how it is you wish to serve this entity or these entities, that you find that desire to speak both clearly and yet with an understanding of the position that is experienced by the questioner. When you feel a desire to serve, then do not worry about the words that might be used to express that desire. Speak freely as you serve as a channel from your conscious and subconscious minds concerning that journey upon which you find yourself. If one worries over much about the specifics of the question and its response, one may find the mind in a kind of tangle. However, if this worry can be circumvented by focusing upon desire to serve freely and without judgment, then a clear path is made to the subconscious portions of the mind which contain the clear and compassionate expression that will suffice as the reply to the query. Thus one serves as an instrument in these situations that one might share that which has been helpful to the self. Is there another query, my sister? That was very helpful, thank you. I do have another question also, and that is, can you offer some suggestions on how to differentiate between serving and pleasing. I am Quo, and I'm aware of your query, my sister. We find in our experience there is a significant difference in these concepts. The desire to serve another is based upon a concern for the other self, and how best to aid that other self in its thinking or in its actions or in its being. The desire to please another self, however, has its focus upon your own self and receiving a reward from the other self for actions which have been constructed with the hope of receiving that reward, whether it be the smile, the confirmation, the attention, or in a negative sense, the removal of criticism. Thus, look to that which is desired from the action to determine whether it is an action that has the other self or the self as its central focus. Is there another query, my sister? Yes, along the same lines, if the desire is truly to serve the other self. There are still many circumstances in which I find it difficult to determine which course of action could truly be of service, and I find that I do not have the appropriate resources to determine that. That's the sort of situation that I'm really interested in. How do I decide what course of action to take with a person when there are various ones open to me and I do not know which would be of more service? I am Quo, and I'm aware of your query, my sister. First, we would recommend that one determine what it is the other self desires. This may be accomplished by a simple query. It is the explicitly expressed desire for service from another self that it is the clearest indication of how that self might be served, regardless of what one might feel would be the greatest service. To become the other self is a means whereby one might, in imagination, as closely as possible, approximate the other self and its desires if the other self is not present and able to be queried as to how best to serve that other self. The further one moves from the explicitly expressed desire from another self, the more possible it becomes that one's offered service will deviate from an actual service. The desire to serve another which motivates action often goes astray when the other self has not requested a service. However, that desire is the fundamental quality that makes it possible to achieve a redress. Shall we say, if the original effort has fallen short, is there another query, my sister? There are times when the explicit request or desire of another entity is something which I do not feel comfortable in being able to fulfill for one reason or another. At those times, my assumption is that my responsibility is to exercise my own judgment as to what I feel that I can honestly give, and yet there are times also when I feel that I should be giving what is asked no matter what, because that is what service is, and that I feel that if I don't, that I'm not being of service. Can you comment on that sort of dilemma? I am Quo and I'm aware of your query, my sister. Indeed, it is a dilemma to be asked to give that which one finds it difficult to give. It is, shall we say, less of a gift if there is the taint of resentment given with the service. It is oftentimes better not to offer the service if it is not possible to offer without the feeling of resentment or guilt or other emotions, which could confuse or color the gift in a manner which would disrupt the clear communication 
shall we say. It is, as you have surmised, better to give what can be given with a cheerful heart than to give all that was asked, but to include the negative emotions as well. It is often helpful in the situation in which one has been asked to give more than one feels one has to offer to meditate upon that which limits the giving in order that one might discover a facet of the being which might benefit from attention. There is much that can be learned by studying limitations and facing them in an honest fashion. There is no shame in recognizing and admitting limitations. These are the boundaries which at one time served one well and provided a fuller arena of experience which we shall say, but which at the present moment have the opposite effect in reducing that which may be offered as service. The discovery of these limitations increases the knowledge of the self so that there is possible an expanded view of the self that included the limitation and the beginning work upon the balance of the fundamental nature of the limitation. Therefore, we would agree with your original assumption that it is better, in terms of the purity of service, to give what one can in a cheerful fashion and when one is unable to give fully, to examine carefully that which limits that which is given. Is there a further query, my sister? Would the examination of these limitations be with a view to removing the limitation or just to understanding and accepting it? I am quo and am aware of your query, my sister. Either may be the case. In our experience, for in many incarnations there are qualities or characteristics which are placed within the character structure that allow certain services to be offered, certain abilities to be expressed, that when seen from another angle, perspective, or point of view, may be seen as limitation to yet another kind of expression. In such an instance, it is well to accept the quality or characteristic that has been discovered through careful self-analysis and meditation to be a fundamental building block of the incarnation and to accept such freely, openly, and with a joyful heart realizing that service yet grows from this limitation. In other cases, it is possible that a limitation is a portion of the being that yet remains to be balanced. And when the balancing occurs, that there is a greater or wider perspective that allows a larger amount of service, shall we say, for want of a better phrase, to be offered. Only one's careful self-analysis and meditation upon the results of such analysis can determine whether certain characteristics must be accepted or might yet yield further growth. Is there a further query, my sister? No, that's very helpful. Thanks very much. I am Quo, and we thank you again, my sister. Is there a query at this time which we may complete this session? I am Quo, and are most grateful to have been able to speak this evening to this group. We take great joy in joining our vibrations with yours. For we find the queries from this group are not only thoughtful and interesting, but come from the deepest concerns of the hearts of those present, in the desire to know more of the self, in order that the self might be offered to the self and to the Creator and its many other selves as a sincere honestation to that one Creator. We are those of Quo, and we await your calls in your future times as you reckon the movement of time and space. We shall leave this instrument and this group at this time, leaving each as always in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We are known to you as those of Quo. Adonai, my friends, Adonai. This concludes this particular channeling. I would definitely refer to this channeling if you ever have questions about how to be of service, how to properly offer service, and become aware of your own gifts in being of service. The fundamental idea from the beginning of this channeling is there is a pattern that you set forward before you started your life. There's no need for you to control your life that you set forward a pattern with your higher self that'll allow you to be of service. And these events will come to you and so part of your process in becoming a service-oriented being is simply following a natural path that has presented itself to you. This natural path is designed for you to be of the greatest service. There are many gifts that each of us have, and oftentimes our limitations can become a source of 
the gifts and service that we can offer to others. A really interesting technique that's given here is to become aware of the other self in giving your service. And if you don't know how to properly be of service to someone, in meditation, bring that person up. Imagine that you're really talking to them and find out how you can be of service. Accept that the other self is you and there is a portion of yourself within that person. So if you're struggling with someone, bring them up in meditation and you will find the best ways to be of service in those moments where you can access the other self as self. Look through their eyes. Think their thoughts. Tune into them. And the more you do this, the more you become aware, oh, this person needs service in this way or that way. There is an interesting question here about the difference between pleasing someone and being of service. It's a tough question. I say that I love to see someone please, and I'm not doing it for a return response to get some favor or anything like that. But they're making the point if you're pleasing someone in order to have that return response or someone smiles back at you or thanks you or offers something in return, then it's not necessarily a service. They also make sure to emphasize that those parents out there, you are being of great service. The process of being a parent and taking care of your kids is an incredible service that you are offering. You learn so much in the process. I have chosen to be of service to others and I am just a neophyte in this process. I become aware of my path and the more I move down this path, the less I know and the less I understand about service and realize its complexities. These channelings help me to clarify the ways in which I can be of service and I'd love to know for those who are listening that have chosen the service-oriented path, if this helps, what sort of roadblocks have you encountered? What sort of questions have you asked yourself or limitations that you found within yourself? Maybe we can help each other to overcome them. How can I be of service to you? You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. I'd love it if you checked out my art. You can find it at www.newearth.com. Dot art. I'm sending all my love and light to everybody listening. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to read these words. We are all one. I feel this oneness in this moment. And thank you. And welcome to the Reality Revolution. <laughs>